yes, there will be baseball. After a 99-day lockout, we now have a complete 162-game schedule starting with opening day on April 7th. To celebrate the return of baseball, we want to do a wow promotion, so here we go. The first 50 customers will get the full season of MLB, including the playoffs, for just over $3 per day. How much of a wow is this? MLB through the All-Star break is priced at $7.95 and through the World Series is priced at $1,095. But the first 50 customers can get MLB through the World Series for $6.99. No coupon is needed and this comes out to just over $3 per day. Once we hit 50 redemptions, the super early bird discount will come down and the lowest possible price to lock in baseball will no longer be available. So act fast before you get shut out on our biggest price drop ever. Good morning and welcome back to Wager Talk TV. I'm Andrew McGinnis and you're watching Puck Time. Also alongside me, I have Carmine Bianco and Brian Leonard. And uh, guys, looking forward to today's show. As usual, we have four games to break down. Best bets at the end. And of course, any promotional stuff if we do have it. As far as yesterday goes for me, quick recap, two and two split night in the NHL. Uh, not something I want, but uh, we'll take that on a losing night and a 1-0 night college hoops, uh, winning a team total wager by half a point. So those are always nice. Uh, but I have to go to Carmine Bianco, ask him, hey, Carm, how was your first uh, full day in Las Vegas, man? How's it going? It's going It's going good, man. Uh, I, I now know why Dave Koken says that uh, the 11 a.m. Eastern time shows or 8 o'clock in the morning shows here out in Vegas are a little tougher because, uh, again, uh, we always talk about the goalies not being available, uh, not knowing who the goalies are, but it's the early start time. Andrew, you're going to feel it when you get here with your buddies. I know. You're going to feel it on Thursday night or Friday morning because we're going to watch the the Panthers uh, game against uh, the Golden Knights. But uh, it's, been a, it's been a pretty good two days thus far and pretty good betting days. Uh, a little luck along the uh, the way, as you know, I sent you a ticket last night. Um, one of my, uh, one of my, I put in a parlay uh, bet. I just, I, I was looking for something to bet. Put in a parlay with uh, three hockey games, and it hit uh, a, um, a, a pretty good price. So I'm gonna have to pick up the tab when you get down here. But I got to watch the game last night. I hit a place uh, called Al's Garage, uh, and I watched the game with uh, with Marco. Um, uh, his wife, Lori, and, of course, our guest who's on today's show. Um, one of my favorite uh, people on the show. Um, definitely better than the filling in on the Wednesday time slot for the Prez, who's not available this week. Ryan Leonard. Ryan, what's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, yeah, Prez on vacation again. Imagine that. Um, what's he do for a living anyway? I'm just wondering. I... Anyway. Vacations. Uh, yeah, tough night for me. I had the Kings last night, and uh, when you get shut out, you're not going to win too many bets. But uh, yeah, uh, college basketball on a 19 or I think maybe 18 and 10 run. Uh, so college basketball is going really good. Um, you mentioned the game on uh, later on this week with Florida. I believe that's tomorrow. And I was checking uh, tickets, and plenty of tickets and plenty of good seats available, as they say. If you're looking to see probably the best or one of the best teams in hockey, and you happen to be in, in uh, Las Vegas tomorrow uh, with the tournament at all. they got so many live events here in Vegas that everybody's going to be watching the tournament and nobody's going to want to go to any of these shows. So if you are in the area where you can come in, in California, Arizona, whatever, this is a good time to do it because you can probably get show tickets pretty cheap. So um, that's the way it is in Vegas. If the tournament's on, everybody wants to watch the games. Yeah, you know what, uh, Brian? We're just going to jump in real quick for Andrew. I'm starting to see. I saw it last night. Uh, Marco dropped me off at uh, the Superbook here at Westgate, and you uh, you're walking through. Um, uh, and I sat down to watch the game, and it's just getting. There's just more and more people. Uh, one of the games are on. Everyone's wearing their team colors in the sports book. It is going to be. Uh, it's just going to be amped up today, and absolutely amped up on Thursday uh, with these games uh, kicking off. But uh, I got to drop by. The, the clubhouse uh, inside the Westgate, the, the Superbook, uh, where we'll be doing the meet and greet on Friday. This place is absolutely fantastic. Uh, um, it, there's some really nice couches in there. All of the, the seating, obviously, inside the Superbook are it, it's fantastic. Uh, and we're going to have a ton of swag. I, it, they, all the stuff is arriving. 
uh, in the next uh, day or two, today and tomorrow, uh, it's arriving here at the hotel. I've gotten the confirmations. They're being shipped. And I brought the puck time shirts with me. Uh, I dropped some off to um, Brian and Marco last night and uh, Marco's lovely wife, Lori. So, um, yeah, the puck time shirts are here. I wore one yesterday throughout the sports book. And uh, we'll be giving away some swag. If you can't make it down here, I am going to put a couple contests up on our Puck Time WT Twitter account. So make sure you follow that. Follow Andrew, follow myself. Of course, subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to put some contests up for the Vegas Panthers game that Andrew and I are going to. I'll put a contest up to win uh, some swag. So uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter. Karma, I just wanted to say before the show gets off here, I mean, we start talking about these games. There's always swag when the three of us are on this show together. We don't need clothing. To have swag. Come on, man. So it's all, <laughs> we got some clothing swag, but there's always some swag with the three of us in the show together. Always good time, different opinions. And uh, just real quick, you talk about uh, how we're going to be feeling it and and, and hats off to, to Brian for doing the shows at this time and day all the time. You know, the craziest thing for me is that, the t- you know, I'm used to being the farthest time zone, the latest time zone that when I'm finished watching a Vegas Golden Knights game, usually it's upwards of two in the morning, you know two in the morning, one thirty, maybe something like that. So it's, I remember when I was in Vegas, it was a weird feeling being at, I think I was at stadium swim and the last game was a Canucks mm-hmm. game playing the sharks and the game was over and it was like nine o'clock local time. I was like, what the hell do I do with my time? Like watching sports at night is what I used to do. Like <laughs> this, what do I do now? So I'm looking forward to that freedom of watching the games during the day and, and having some fun at night. And if we can maintain that routine, uh, I'll, I'll be a very happy camper. So looking forward to Friday, though. I hope everybody comes out and says hello to us. And uh, it sounds like it's going to be a great, great event. Uh, today's games we're going to discuss, we've got a handful of them today. Uh, the irony is Prez always complains about how there's not that many games on Wednesdays. And every Wednesday he seems to take off. Uh, <laughs> there's quite a few games. So Columbus and Ottawa, Boston Bruins and Minnesota Wild the Devils and the Flames and the nightcap with the Kraken and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's start things off with our first game. We have the Blue Jackets and the Ottawa Senators here. Two teams that, hey, uh, I guess it's very easy to say they have been giving up goals. Six and a half is the total. Ottawa favored, minus 140. Always wonder about that team when they're favored. And Columbus, plus 120 on the road as underdogs here in this one. Look, uh, uh, Carm, you know, real quick for me, uh, I'm going to keep it short and simple. This is one that I just don't, I, I don't see defense between these two teams. Ottawa in a great spot, big favorites at minus 155, closing number against Arizona. Give up five goals, give up some goals early in that game, did not play well defensively. Poor effort goaltending-wise, poor effort defensively. They've now given up five and six in their last two games, 11 total. And realistically, when they play a team that's lower than them, they actually end up going down to their level. It seems like Ottawa is a better team sometimes when they play top tier teams, as funny as that sounds. And, you, you know, when they play a bottom feeder, I guess we could sort of call Columbus that. They stoop down to their level and start making stupid mistakes. And Columbus, well, they've been involved in some higher scoring games as well, but also... They've given up goals, given up goals against Toronto, Boston, Los Angeles. So I like over six and a half here, Carm. I'm not going to look uh, look back at it, think twice about it. Give me the over. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, my thoughts here are I, I was kind of surprised that that uh, the Sens are favored. But, you know, the more I look at it, you know, it, this is one of those games where uh, Columbus just, it, they're, they're not playing well. You look at the games that, uh, in all honesty, uh, I, I get it. If you're looking at purely just, you know, the last few games, you're like the Sens have lost a couple of games. That last game against uh, Arizona, Arizona's playing well right now. We talked about it. I was talking about it last night with, with Brian. Uh, they're actually, they're, they're stringing some wins together and they're competing. They're playing extremely well. Um, and you look at Columbus, you know, they're coming in off of two wins, but uh, if you look a little further at those games, their their wins came against Andrew against teams that are really struggling right now. The Vegas Golden Knights dropped all five games on this road trip. Um, they're uh, they're a dumpster fire right now. And if you watch the game last night, anytime you thought they might get back into the game, 
they didn't. Uh, Brian actually made a comment to me. I think when it was, when it was five to one, I said, uh, um, if the Knights can score the next goal real quickly, they can somehow find their way back into this game. And Brian said, I'll take your bet, whatever you want. I'll take your bet on that. Um, but, and, you know, with that said, and then the game before that, uh, they played the Minnesota Wild. They beat the Wild 3-2. Again, you can only play the teams in front of you, and you would normally think the, the Golden Knights and, and the Minnesota Wild are very good teams, and they might be, um, or they might have been, but they're teams that are struggling immensely right now as well, too. So they kind of took advantage of that. They're on the road here. The market moved uh, from the opener. It was, uh, I think, auto opened minus 120. It's now at minus 140. And it's, uh, it, it's likely uh, Elvis Merzlikens in goal tonight. Uh, he hasn't been as good on the road as he has at home. At home this year, he's 13-7-3 and three with a 3.14 goals against average. He's almost, almost a full goal worse on the road. He's 8-8, eight eight, uh, 3.91 uh, goals against average. And his save percentage is under 9. It's at .888. It's just one of those ones where when we talk about home and away splits and goalies who do well on the uh, at home, um, and he he doesn't do well on the road, Andrew. For me, I'm going to take Ottawa here. I'm, I'm going to stay away from the total. I just well six and a half. Sometimes they just uh, they just seem to get you. I'm going to take Ottawa here. Uh, the market I think might be right in making them a 140 in this spot, uh, and I'm going to take Ottawa, Brian. I'm looking at it a, a little bit different, and I'll be honest with you, none of these games excite me today from a betting standpoint. I'm not finding many edges at all with these four games, but I w didn't have any interest in the overnight at the line 120, but now that we're seeing 140s, it's kind of putting me on Columbus here, reluctantly, I guess. Um, you know, you got a Columbus team that you mentioned. You hit it right on the nose with uh, playing Minnesota and, and Vegas. Uh, normally that would be pretty impressive, but both teams are really struggling right now. But, you know, they did lose to the Islanders 6 nothing, which is embarrassing. But the two games before that, um, they only lost to Toronto by a goal, and then they lost to Boston in a shootout. So they're actually playing pretty well for Columbus. Um, and you take a look at Ottawa, this has been a disaster of a homestand for Ottawa. Um, they played St. Louis on the 8th, and then they have, you know, five straight games at home against weak composition, uh, opposition. They play Seattle. They win that game in overtime. They play Chicago, lose by three goals. They play Arizona, who you just spoke about. They lose that game by two goals. Now they play Columbus, and they have Philadelphia on deck. This was a get-right homestand for Ottawa, and they come into this at 1-2 and two and had to go to overtime to get that win over Seattle, who hasn't been impressing anybody. Um, I have these two teams basically rated equal, and if I can get a plus 120 uh, in this game where I thought it should be a pick 'em, I think that's the way I'm going to take a look at it. They got an extra day off, uh, as as does uh, the visitor in this one, so I'll take Columbus. Both teams, as, as was mentioned by by Andrew, both teams have a uh, problem stopping the opposition, so I have no uh, disagreement with playing the over either, but. I just think at this point I got a slight edge with Columbus, and and that's what I'll go with in this one. Yeah, Brian. Before we go back to uh, Andrew on this one, you know I get where you're coming from. You know the problem is as we get towards um, you know we're into the last quarter of the season, is you look at the East, and the East is pretty much locked up. Uh, Columbus had a really nice run where they put together uh, some good wins on the road. Uh, and home to sort of get into into the race, but the the race was only really uh, for that wild card because the Boston Bruins and the Washington Capitals were struggling to get wins, so that gap shortened. But at 13 points, you know, I think it, it's it I, they're done and dusted. I think at this point, we're just gonna because the Bruins are starting to win, the Caps are winning. It's just the Columbus will have to play at such a huge winning clip. It's what makes, uh, and I completely agree with you. It's what makes. Um, you know, cards like tonight, uh, ones where you just, there's nothing there. There really isn't. I have literally one play up at Wager Talk, and it's not even for sale. I'm going to give it away on the show uh, for you guys uh, at the end of the show. But uh, it, it's such, it's one of those cards where um, it's like you said, nothing is appealing to you, and it's very tough. And we're seeing some absolutely horrible numbers as well, too. These minus 300s. We have a couple of games tonight that are minus, they're unbettable. They really are unbettable. Um, uh, unless you're finding uh, 
team totals and Andrew seems to be able to find uh, those in, in spots and stuff. But um, Andrew, I'm going to go back to you. I just wanted to throw in a quick word on, on uh, the uh, Blue Jackets here. Yeah, you know, one thing to add to that, I think, real quick, uh, from just my perspective with the uh, the prop betting market, guys, I think that with uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets right now, you know, wh- when they have a good game offensively, and if I was looking towards betting on them, me personally, I would be looking at, you know, some Patrick Line props, some Jack Roslovich props, Gustav Nyquist props, because the, the thing is, they're they're pretty much the only guys that that really do much for that team, which which is kind of crazy because... You know, even when they're involved in high scoring games, it's a lot of times it's the same names that are involved. You know, I know this might sound weird, but, you know, if Patrick Line doesn't get us a goal or a point in a game and you told me that prior to the game, I'll tell you they're going to lose. I mean, it's one player, but I would say the depth issue on the Blue Jackets is hurting. Yeah. Um, but but they still have, a, a you know, a good offense. It's just there's definitely hurting a little bit after that top six. Uh, but let's jump into our next game. We'll, we'll get Brian's thoughts here with the Boston Bruins and the Minnesota Wild. I know you said it's kind of a weird card here, but uh, I thought this was kind of a peculiar line with the Wild. Uh, minus 115, Boston minus 105, totals at six here. If you are interested in the puck line, uh, the minus one and a half is plus 220. First impressions here, Brian, was, was you know what? This, uh, this Wild team isn't the team they were two months ago. And it's a what have you done for me lately in handicap, uh, you know, it's a back-to-back for the Bruins, but I think they planned accordingly with their goaltending situation. Uh, first, an opening thoughts for me were, were Bruins are pass. Uh, any any thoughts there? Yeah, I I would agree. Um, they were at plus one hundred overnight, and now they're seeing uh, money coming in on on Boston. It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, not enough value for me to play it. But uh, even though Boston wins that game in Chicago 2-1 to one in overtime yesterday, if you take a look at the expected goals, they dominated that game. So it was a situation where they just didn't have any puck luck in that contest, but they were clearly the better team. So uh, they're playing very well. Hey, they beat Arizona the other day. <laughs> and who would have thought that that would be an accomplishment? But Arizona's playing very well. Uh, yeah, second of a back-to-back here. Uh, Boston, I'm playing... I, I played a future on Boston at 30 to 1 the other day. I was, had a friend from Boston in town and we were talking about it. I was asking him a little bit more because that's his team. And uh, I said, 30 to 1. I said, you got, you got to take advantage of that because that's been a team all season long that hasn't played up to their expectations. And from a shot quality standpoint of uh, the luck factor in, in hockey, they've been unlucky. And uh, so we got them at 30 to 1 and then they go on a nice little run. So that works out really well. But um, playing a second row back to back, I still think they're the team to beat here. Normally, Minnesota, the way you would play Minnesota was you would get value on a game like this because Boston's coming in. Uh, they've been red hot, playing really well lately. Minnesota's got two days off off of an embarrassing home loss to Nashville, uh, six to two. So, um, from from a standpoint of a team should be prepared. This should be Minnesota's game. But they just haven't shown it. They've had to go to overtime to, to win in Detroit. They lost to Columbus. Uh, Dallas crushed them by three earlier. They've lost to Buffalo. They've lost to some bad teams so far in the month of March. And now they're playing probably other than Calgary, uh, probably the best team that they've seen on the schedule this year. By the way, they did lose that game to Calgary 5-1 to one at home. So I don't think they can step up here. Uh, normally I would be looking at that situation, but – I like the Bruins here. Unfortunately, money's coming in on them, and I just don't have the advantage that I had earlier. What about you, Carm? Uh, obviously, it's an interesting price. Both Brian and I were kind of leaning the same way. Uh, can, can we trust the Wild is really the question. I think it's like Brian said, I think, that realistically, everything aside situationally, it sets up to be a decent spot for the Wild, but can we trust them? What are your thoughts here, Carm? No, I don't think you can trust them at all right now. They just, they, they just aren't playing well. I, I agree with Brian on everything he said. You know, uh, um, I'm watching the markets as you know, as as you guys are discussing the game, and you know, there is some some, um, some action coming in on the Bruins, and there probably will be a little bit more. You know, Talbot is listed as the starter uh, tonight, the confirmed starter tonight, and and yeah, he has won his last three games. But you look at these score lines; it, it's like Brian mentioned. 
that game against the, the Red Wings, it, it was like neither team wanted to win that game. You were never uncomfortable. You were never comfortable uh, if your team had the lead in that game. Uh, they're just not playing well. And to say that, well, they're they're a good team and they, they've got uh, they're a good offensive team, so they're due to win. That due factor does not work. That due factor. Uh, if, if, if you use that to handicap, you'll eventually have to find a second job uh, to reload your accounts because it's just, uh, it's not a handicapping method. Um, the, listen, the Bruins are a good team. Um, whether they win tonight or not, um, uh, this game will not be on my card. Uh, if you can find a winner in this game, um, uh, God bless you. But if the Bruins were plus money, um, I would take it. Even I would take any plus money, Andrew, uh, if it was plus 105, plus 110. But the fact that Minnesota's playing the way they are right now, and that six-two loss uh, to, to the Breds was an embarrassment for this team. Do they bounce back a, a couple of days off? Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I just do not trust this uh, this Wild team right now, and they likely won't be on any of my betting cards for the near future until they turn it around. Um, um, we're gonna, we're going to see the next three or four days what the um, the trade market brings with the. Uh, the deadline on the 21st, but um, a lot of goalies. Uh, uh, we're going to see what happens with the goalies because uh, how confident are you heading into the playoffs in the Western Conference where you're going to have to play teams, uh, you know, teams like the Colorado Avalanche, and um, your goalies are uh, Kapanen and uh, and Talbot. Um, uh, not too confident uh, uh, for me, Andrew. So. Um, this while this game is a pass for me, um, I'm just going to continue to watch the markets and maybe a small bet on the Bruins here. All right, and as far as the total, I'd look towards the first period over one and a half goals. You know, back to back for the bees. Wild struggling defense. I think we could, I think we could see over one and a half uh, in the first period. Let's get into our next game here with the Devils and the Calgary Flames here. Uh, New Jersey Devils coming off that again, you know, my best bet yesterday with the over Canucks and the Devils, uh, they just continue to be involved in higher scoring games. Can that change from one night to the next? I actually have a feeling it could change a little bit here, but the Calgary Flames, they're minus 330 favorites. Uh, if you want the puck line, still got to lay minus 125. What are your thoughts here, Carm? Uh, after we saw the Devils, what they did yesterday in that game and another high scoring one. Another team we can't really trust defensively. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now, this is the only um, the only play that I'm going to have on today's card. So it won't be up for sale, but it is loaded for my clients. I'm taking the over in the game. You know, I watched the game last night, and um, New Jersey, after a run of a few games, a few lower scoring games, they're sort of gravitating back to um, two, three weeks ago where all their games were high scoring. Um, uh, they just not playing well. Uh, defensively, and last night, uh, obviously a goaltending switch. So last night was supposed to be uh, Nico. Uh, uh, well, it was uh, Nico Dawes, and it was supposed to be uh, Gillies tonight. Um, and it's still showing Gillies as the expected goalie, but uh, Dawes got pulled um, after a, a couple goals in the second period. And sometimes you pull that goalie um, uh, with the intention of starting him the next night because it's just not his night. Uh, when they went down, I think four two in that in, in that game, and Gillies came in, so I think it could be they could go, go right back to Dawes, and it, it'd likely be Markstrom uh, tonight because I think it was uh, Ladar uh, in uh, in net against uh, in that loss in uh, Colorado, and he didn't play uh, that bad in that in that game. But even with Markstrom at home, Andrew, I see some goals. It's it's likely going to be a lopsided game for Calgary, but I can't lay the three hundred. Can't even play the regulation because it's probably at two hundred. Or so regulation, so that's that's your price right out of that. And then the goal line, the goal line is going to go higher than what it is right now. It's it's minus one and a half, um, minus one twenty five. That's likely going to close at uh, minus one forty ish, and that's also unplayable. Even if you think Calgary is going to, to blow them out at some point, you might actually want to come back with New Jersey and take the plus one and a half at plus money. Plus money, I can't do it myself. Maybe Brian will. But for me, it's the total in this game. I'm going to go over six and expect some goals here, Brian. I like the over, but I prefer the over in the first period. Um, just the way New Jersey's been one of those teams all year long. They give up a lot of goals in the first period. They come out on fire and uh, and do well. But uh, they are playing the second of a back-to-back. You mentioned uh, the Vancouver loss last night. That is a concern, but they did have the uh, 
few days off before that. But I want to pay more attention to the Calgary schedule. Uh, Calgary, I talked about the murderers row they were on earlier this month. They played uh, Colorado, Edmonton, Washington, Tampa Bay. They did play uh, Detroit, and then they play Colorado again. They've had the last two days off, and take a look at who they've got on schedule uh, for the next few games. Play New Jersey tonight at home. Play Buffalo at home on uh, in two days from now. Uh, they go to Vancouver for one game, and then they come back home, and they finish the month out with five more home games, including San Jose and Arizona. So they just played a lot of tough teams, and they had success. And now they're sitting comfortably in first place in this division. I can see them overlooking New Jersey tonight a little bit. And if they are, I think it'll be on the defensive end. Um, I agree. I like your over six. I like the first period over a little bit better. And we'll see how this game goes. If they take care of New Jersey uh, pretty well tonight, they play uh, at home against Buffalo in two days. First of a back-to-back, -back, then they play Vancouver. I could easily see them definitely overlooking a Buffalo team who I was looking to go against after Buffalo had their two big games, number one against Eichel in, uh, in, against Vegas with Eichel. And then they play the game, you know, the, the next game out, the, uh, the real important game and the outdoor game. So um, I was looking to fade Buffalo, but maybe it's one of those games where we just look to play the over when they play Buffalo, and that'll come up in two days on Friday. Uh, I might want to get ahead of that one because I could see them overlooking Buffalo definitely if they if they take uh, New Jersey for granted if they take New Jersey at their uh, speed tonight and uh, New Jersey gives them a decent game so we'll see we'll see how it goes but first period over would be the way I'd look at this one. All right, guys, let's chat about our last game: the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Seattle Kraken. It's uh, the nightcap, I guess we'll call it here, uh, but. You know, it's a big favorite. Tampa Bay, minus 300. Seattle, plus 240 at home. Totals at six in this contest. And look, you look at Tampa Bay recently here, guys, and, uh, you know, they, they did lose a couple games in a row. They, lose th they lost three straight games, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton. Uh, and that was not a fun road trip for them. And, you know, it, it, hey, they, you know, they get that win against Vancouver, of course, but uh, it continues tonight in Seattle. And Brian, you know, we've talked about these big prices. We've talked about, you know, should a minus 300 be a minus 340 or that kind of stuff. But when I look at this game, I, I think that I'm going to see goals here. And what I'm going to do is not worry about Seattle. I'm going to take the over three and a half goals for Tampa Bay's team total at minus 130. And I expect Tampa, Tampa Bay, after playing some tough competition, after playing three very laser-focused teams, uh, to grab a Seattle team that's given up six, four, three, five, you know, their last couple of games, they are not, um, you know, strangers to giving up lots of goals. And I'm looking at the team total tonight for a Tampa Bay team that should be very motivated, that has lots of depth, lots of scoring options, and should be able to get it done. So uh, that's what I'm looking at here for the game. Team total route. What about yourself? Makes a lot of sense to me. I don't want any part of the Kraken. Uh, if you take a look at uh, goals plus or minus per 60 on the season on five on five, you've got like a 1.46, one and a half goal advantage here for Tampa Bay. Uh, Seattle has been just as bad at home as they've been on the road. Uh, Tampa Bay, as you mentioned, uh, started this road trip. Um, you know, they, they lose to Winnipeg seven to four. I guess Winnipeg's an offensive juggernaut lately. Uh, but uh, they lose to Calgary, they lose to Edmonton, and then they come back and beat Vancouver the last game. This is a game with the last two days off. I would expect the offense for, uh, for Tampa Bay to come out and, and play really well, especially considering they've only scored, what, four goals in the last three games. Uh, they, can, they can put up the points here on, against the Seattle defense. And Seattle's a team, you know, from a scheduling standpoint, this is really their only game in a six-day span. Um, they play tonight. They've had the last three days off, and they've got two days ahead uh, that they're off before they host Detroit. So from a scheduling standpoint, you should get your best effort out of Seattle tonight. I just don't trust the Seattle defense. And when you've got a team that has as many good offensive players as Tampa Bay does, I find no fault in your playing that uh, over the three and a half for a team total. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me, maybe even for the game, playing the over. Uh, but once again, um, won't make my cards. I'll probably end up passing overall today. 
What about you, Carm? Last game of the night here, obviously a minus 300 with Tampa Bay. Uh, what do you think about that team total? Yeah, no, I I, I will agree with you because, it's not, again, it's not going to make my card, but uh, I, I do like the team total. So that's probably something that I'll look at um, in, in this game. Uh, you know, to Brian's point, yeah, it, it's uh, Seattle hasn't played in uh well they haven't played in a while the, they've had some some days off you know the, the only thing is uh and i just mentioned it in in the chat because someone has said what about taking uh, uh the lightning and uh and uh, putting them in a, a, a parlay the only problem is uh there's no listed goal yet and i get it they should be able to beat the seattle kraken regardless of whether it's vasileski and net or or elliot but i wouldn't want to make a bet and then find out it's elliot in goal tonight um, I'd rather have Vasilevsky in, in, in goal, especially if, at this price, if you're taking any type of a version of a bet, whether it's regulation, puck line, or what have you. Uh, the Kraken every once in a while, playing a team like Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay coming in, um, it's literally like Seattle's Stanley Cup. It's what it is. Sometimes these, uh, these, uh, these teams at the bottom of the standings will play one of their best games against very good teams. You look at the Florida Panthers came into Seattle, um, uh, a, a short while ago, uh, and, and and Seattle knocked off Florida in in that game. That was on the 23rd of January, and the Kraken beat the Panthers five to three. So every once in a while, one of these teams that's plus 280 is going to jump up and bite you in the you know what. And I don't want to be on the end of that you know what, Andrew. Um, so with with that said, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on the game, but I would take I would take Tampa Bay and Fitz Vasilevsky. I'd probably look at maybe tying in the. Uh, Tampa in regulation time uh, into a parlay with 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 another team and trying to get some even money out of that. I'm going to tell you a quick uh, quick stat on Tampa Bay, which I thought was very interesting. We talk about teams on back to backs, and this is not a back to back situation. But Tampa Bay has had eight back to back games this season, uh, eight scenarios where they've been back to back. In the first game of uh, the back to back for Tampa Bay, they are one and seven. In the second game of a back-to-back, Tampa Bay is seven and one. So it's uh, it's a stat where normally you expect the team to have a better uh, record uh, in that first game of the back-to-back and not so good in the second game. And Brian made a good point to me last night when we discussed this. Uh, he literally said Tampa's a very good team coming off a loss. So that second record of the seven and one in the second game uh, is it holds very true because of the fact that they've gone one and seven in the first eight games. So. A quick little stat I thought I'd throw out there on back-to-backs. Tampa has three of those left this season, so it's something that you might want to look at. Good stuff, Carm. Yeah, those stats are really important to keep in mind, especially you know looking at it, – it pays a lot of credit, I think, to the goalie tandems they've had over the years, the depth they have, the good defense. And you look at a lot of teams, you know, they struggle with these back-to-backs. And uh, I've always said that for the big teams, they're kind of overrated a little bit. So – uh, let's jump into some best bets here, guys. Uh, here on this show, we'll we'll go through some of the favorite plays we like here on the card. Uh, we've all kind of mentioned it. We don't love this card um, as far as you know, top top plays up at Wager Talk. At least I'll speak for myself. Uh, but we do have some leans here for this game or for this uh, slate here. So I'll start with you, Carm. Uh, go right back to you for your best bet for the show and just what you have up for clients, man. Yeah, just a couple uh, a couple Champions League uh, games that go today. Uh, I'm going to head down and, and bet them both. And looking forward to watching some some uh, European football today. Um, and as far as NHL, uh, I don't have a card loaded. I only have one play loaded. I have already told you guys what the play is. It's the Calgary and New Jersey over six. And my show best bet is going to be in the exact same game. And Brian actually mentioned it, that he loved the first period over. And I'm taking the first period over as the show best bet. I'm going to go over one and a half, uh, minus 135 as the uh, show best bet. And let's see if we can get some goals in this one and get us a winner, not only in the first period, but in the full game. So uh, thanks to all you guys for tuning in. Hopefully we'll see you on Friday. And uh, hit that subscribe button as well. Awesome stuff. Uh, good luck with that bet, Carm. I like it. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. I uh, can't wait to go to that uh, Florida Panthers game. Uh, Brian, we'll go to you for your best bet and uh, what you have up for clients. And I want to ask you, uh, will we see you at some point tomorrow uh, or or Friday? At least I know we'll, we'll see you. But will you be at that game on Thursday? I have tickets right now. I just don't have anybody to go with. 
So if I could get somebody that wants to go, maybe a, maybe we got somebody out there that's watching this video that's going to be in Vegas tomorrow, like to join us for a game. Hell, I'll I'll, I'll buy your ticket for you. Uh, get in touch with us, and maybe you can uh, go and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll head over there. I, I'm not sitting with you guys. Obviously, I've got my season tickets. But yeah, it'd be great. That'd be that'd be a nice thing. Maybe we could do something uh, harm with a little bit of a contest, and if uh, somebody can make it, uh, they. They get to sit with maybe maybe they sit with each one of us for a different period. That'd be a little bit of fun. But anyway, let's get to today's games. Uh, as I talked about, I didn't love this card at all, but I did send out Columbus plus the one twenty three. And fortunately, now as the show's been going on, everybody else has found the same a uh, little bit of weakness that I found. So we're only getting the one fifteen to one twenty now. But still, that'd be the way I'd look at this one. I've got these two teams rated equally. Uh, also leaned with Boston against Minnesota, which uh, which is like a pick 'em at this point, and uh, the play that Carmine just talked about, the over in the first period for New Jersey and Calgary. So I like all three of those, but obviously nothing is strong. The strongest out of the bunch would be Columbus right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's let's enjoy tonight's hockey and uh, make some. Maybe we'll make money in uh, basketball the next few days also. Absolutely. I uh, look forward to seeing you again, Brian. We, uh, we we didn't get to spend too much time really and, and chat too much. We were too busy having some wings and and uh, it was just a quick chat. Last time I was in Vegas, look forward to uh, catching up and chatting and uh, seeing you on Friday, hopefully maybe tomorrow. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not really my favorite card today, guys. So uh, still pending whether or not I'll be in action with clients. Uh, but I do have college basketball plays going up here shortly after this show. So uh, check back in with that at my profile page. And, and just again, guys, we really want to stress uh, that we hope you guys join us uh, on Friday at the Westgate, 2 o'clock until 7. Uh, there's going to be a huge crowd of us there. And uh, we just look forward to having a great time. And I can't wait to meet all of you guys and anybody that wants to come. It's going to be a blast. A uh, little afternoon party. And, of course, going to be some great games going on. Hockey, college basketball. Um, well, we're there. So look forward to that. Uh, quite a bit. Uh, looking forward to it. And uh, we have Marco on uh, Wager Talk today, coming up right after puck time at 12 o'clock Eastern time. He's going to be wearing the puck time t shirt. Uh, so if you want to kind of have a preview of what that looks like, check out Wager Talk today with Steve and Teddy and Marco, and uh, you can get a little sneak peek of that. But uh, my best bet, short and simple, guys, I'm taking the Bruins here on the road. Uh, I think right now, even though it's a back-to-back, -back, I trust them more than I trust the Wild. I trust their offense, and I trust their defensive capability more than I trust the Minnesota Wild. So the Minnesota Wild will have to prove to me that they should be favorites like this over the Bruins. Albeit they're at home, I'm not buying it. Give me the Bruins on the money line. And on behalf of Brian Leonard, Carmine Bianco, our producer Dan, I am Andrew, and I will see you guys on Friday. Yes, there will be baseball. After a 99-day lockout, we now have a complete 162-game schedule starting with opening day on April 7th. To celebrate the return of baseball, we want to do a wow promotion, so here we go. The first 50 customers will get the full season of MLB, including the playoffs, for just over $3 per day. How much of a wow is this? MLB through the All-Star break is priced at $7.95 and through the World Series is priced at $1.95. But the first 50 customers can get MLB through the World Series for $6.99. No coupon is needed, and this comes out to just over $3 per day. Once we hit 50 redemptions, the super early bird discount will come down, and the lowest possible price to lock in baseball will no longer be available. So act fast before you get shut out on our biggest price drop ever.